I don't really care about playing old video games. That's a really weird way to start this video. Let me clarify that position. I have great fondness for a number of the games that I grew up playing as a child, but these days I'm much more interested in repairing and upgrading the hardware that played those games. And even then, I don't really get the time to sit and play them. So I might seem to be a rather strange choice to review Heber's new Mr. Multisystem 2, but maybe I'm their target audience. Let's find out. So if you're not familiar with the Mr. project, then let me quickly explain it. It's an open source project which began life in 2017 and seeks to replicate the hardware of many early consoles, computers and arcade machines through the use of an FPGA or Field Programmable Gate Array chip. Basically, that's a fancy way of saying magic chip that can be used to replicate the silicon of older computers, but at a hardware level, and that distinction is really important. There are conflicting opinions on this all over the internet, but the way I understand it, and will be happy to be corrected on, is that if something like a Raspberry Pi running RetroPi is software emulation, then the Mr. project is, by comparison, hardware emulation. The goal is to have a machine that is as close as practically possible to the original hardware while remaining multi-purpose, i.e. it can be reconfigured to emulate at hardware level as many machines as possible. But what is this device? Well, as the name would suggest, it's the second generation multi-system designed and produced by Heber, part of the Retro Collective here in the UK and a company in their own right, operating out of the famed Belvedere Mill in the beautiful Cotswolds. This is Heber's second crack at making a truly accessible and living room suited version of a Mr. Device. Though, with this version, they've broken away from the mould of what a Mr. Device has been up to now. You see, at the heart of the original Mr. project, and of the original Mr. Multisystem, is the Thoracic DE10 Nano Field Development Board, a common and generally available FPGA board which is the configurable bit that allows different machine cores to run. And while the Mr. Multisystem 2 claims to have full compatibility with the Mr. Project, and by the way, I have no reason to believe that wouldn't be the case, it is, as I understand, the first Mr. Compatible project which takes some step towards customising the hardware away from using that development board. Instead, the required hardware of that board is integrated into the Multisystem system board itself, which Heber says makes it cheaper to produce, easier to integrate and improves the quality of video and audio signalling. Before we get too deep into that though, let's take a look around. It's worth pointing out that the Mr. Multisystem 2 will ship in two separate versions, the full version I have here, and a scaled down version with less connectors and expandability which they're calling the digital version, but we'll get to that. First off, a word on the design. Richard at Heber has clearly put a lot of thought into the overall look of this thing, it really does look like it could have been a console in the first half of the 90s. Aside from the fact that it's 3D printed and that wasn't really a thing back then. And yes, it is 3D printed, but honestly, from more than about a foot away, you'd be hard pressed to realize that. You really need to get up close and personal to be able to see the layer lines. From anything more than a couple of feet away, you genuinely cannot tell. And because it is 3D printed and because Heber are all round good guys, if you have the capability, you can always 3D print your own case in whatever colour you want. Or, if you don't have a 3D printer, you can use the services of this video sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay are my go-to provider of PCBs, and they also provide 3D printing, PCB assembly and CNC and injection moulding. Right now, they're celebrating their 11th anniversary with a whole bunch of special offers. So follow the link below and get your orders in before July 18th to save yourself some cash on your upcoming projects. Thanks PCBWay for continuing to sponsor my channel. And now back to the video. Anyway, I really like the contrast between straight and curved lines that he's gone with. It's almost CD32 like in its design with maybe a smidge of turbo graphics thrown in for good measure. It's a nice size too, and won't look out of place in amongst other set-top boxes or games consoles. The front of the machine is the same no matter which version you go for. You'll get four USB ports along with indicator lights, as well as the SD card slot for loading software, 
three buttons for controlling the system, and a slider switch for turning the machine off and on. Round to the back of this analog version, you get the power jack, an HDMI connector, a TOSLink digital audio connector, analog stereo audio, RGB output via a DIN connector, a 15 port VGA connector for connecting to a PC monitor, RJ45 Ethernet, and two more USB ports. If you opt for the digital only version, then you'll only get an HDMI connector on the back, none of the other audio, video, or networking ports that are in the analog version. That said, it's the same 10 layer PCB, no matter which version you go for. The digital version just saves on the cost of the premium connectors that Hebrew have used, and those savings are passed on to you. In theory, that means you could go ahead and solder those connectors on yourself at a later date, and presumably print yourself a new case, and you'll have the extra connectivity shown here. I can't say that that would always make much financial sense though. I suppose if you only wanted some of the connectivity, it might? Anyway, to the top of the unit, you've got a retractable slot cover, which exposes what looks like a PCI Express slot underneath. This is actually a connector for Heber's snack adapters, which allows you to add to your console with additional connectors for original controllers or video output options. There's even an option for adding a Raspberry Pi to the unit so that you can take advantage of the MT32 Pi project, which adds Roland MT32 functionality for authentic sound. Sadly, this is another feature that is only applicable on the analog version though. You're sensing a pattern here. On top of both versions though, you have this recessed area here. And this is an intriguing proposition, I must say. Both consoles have the option to add an NFC reader via a USB connector and utilize the Zapparoo loading system. That's a project for using NFC cards for loading games automatically. Without going into too much detail, this is essentially a way to configure relatively cheap NFC cards to load certain games or random games from a selection, meaning you can maintain the sort of tactile sensation that you would have had loading an original game from a cartridge or CD. I mean, it's not exactly the same, but I guess I see the appeal. Lastly, on the analog version, you also get these removable covers, which allow you easy access to some dip switches and this 50 pin header here. Right now, this doesn't actually do anything, but Heber have included it for future expansion options, which makes me think that this interfaces with the FPGA chip directly somehow, though I haven't checked. You can also see here there's the seventh and final USB port available on this system. And in this case, it has an NFC reader attached for the game selection functionality. So what's it like to actually use? Well. Connected up to this CRT TV via SCART, I'm really impressed with the picture quality. It does look really crisp and the text is styled well enough to be readable at these lower resolutions. I do think that the actual menu of the MISTER project, which to be clear is not a part of the multi-system itself and is instead just the MISTER software in action, is pretty dull and uninspired and nothing like what you might expect if you were using a project like RetroPie. But it is a breeze to navigate, and because it is so basic, it feels really snappy. Of course, we don't buy a product like this to spend time in the menus, and this isn't a deep dive into the multi-system software itself, so what's it like playing games? Well, it's flawless. I stacked the multi-system 2 up against my original consoles, and I just couldn't tell the difference. Every game I loaded played exactly as it did on the original console, with no stutter, slowdowns, or any of the other flaws that sometimes affect software emulation. As someone not familiar with the Mr. Project, I was genuinely blown away by this. And I must admit, I really do get the difference now between software emulation and FPGA-based hardware emulation. Not only this, but I was blown away at the scope of available cores. Almost every console, arcade system, and microcomputer all the way up to the mid-90s is covered here, and every one that I tried worked perfectly. The experience is much the same if you use it connected to a more modern TV as well. I have it here linked up by my AV amp to my LG 4K OLED TV, and the experience is almost identical to that of the CRT TV I used earlier. The games look crisp and accurate, and run as smoothly as they do on a native console or arcade machine. 
Arcade games in particular look brilliant as shown in this not at all staged footage. What's interesting though is after I yelled cut and told them they could stop playing, the wife actually carried on, which says something. I'm sure I've barely scratched the surface on what this machine is capable of. As I mentioned, I have no previous experience with the Mr. Project, but it does very much feel like something you could get running no matter what your setup, if you have the time to do so. So I suppose I should really talk about whether or not I think this product is worth buying, and my answer is a little nuanced. First and foremost, it will depend on whether you're already in the Mr. ecosystem. If you are, then there's nothing really new here other than a better developed solution, which certainly looks a bit better when nestled in front of a TV. But if you haven't yet invested, then it's definitely worth considering this as your entry point into Mr. When it comes to the analog version, with all its connectivity options and its snack adapter slot, absolutely, it's a great product. If your goal is just to play the games you remember on an analog TV and have them look and feel like they did when you were young, then it's a great option and a compelling price compared to what it would cost you to build your own Mr. Stack. I mean, it's not cheap. It's going to be £252, including VAT. And you still then have to buy your own power supply SD card and AV leads. But at under £300, that's a darn sight cheaper than buying a selection of original consoles and computers. And it does look a heck of a lot better than a standard Mr. Setup, so there's definitely that going for it. But the digital version? Well, out of the box, you are limited to just an HDMI output. And there's no Wi-Fi, Ethernet, or any other form of legacy output to connect to a CRT. And you don't get the snack adapter slot, which does limit you to what you can hope to achieve through expandability. So on first glance, it doesn't seem like it'd be worth it given the relatively low price difference between the two models. But if you're happy with a soldering iron and because both versions use the exact same system board, you could just solder on the RGB video output. And that's probably fine for most people that just want to sit down in front of a CRT and play games with a USB keypad. Lastly, will I buy one? I don't know. The problem I have is that I already have quite an extensive collection of micros and games consoles. And as I mentioned at the outset, I'm much more interested in the hardware than I am actually playing games. So I'm not sure I'd get much use out of it. But on that point, this is an amazing piece of hardware. And I genuinely do think that Heber should be proud of it. This is a labour of love and a testament to Richard's knowledge and experience. He has done a fantastic job of creating something that will hopefully grow over time and does genuinely offer an FPGA offering that is a cut ahead of everything else available. So it's in the wish list, and we'll see what happens. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, there is a button explicitly for that. And if you want to see more of this kind of content from me, you can subscribe by the button on screen now. I'll also give a quick shout out to the Retro Hardware Discord server, where you can chat with other like-minded people, myself included. And until next time, bye bye.